Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. And welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics. As promised, we're going to hear from the Republicans now after hearing from two Democrats in the legislature. I want to introduce Senator Tom Takubo. He's a Republican of Kanawha County and just this week was named the majority leader in the state Senate. Great to have you on. Glad to be here. Senator Takubo, he's also a doctor. Uh, tell us about yourself first. Introduce yourself to uh, the statewide audience and tell them about Tom Takubo. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Mark. Um, I'm a pulmonary critical care physician here in Charleston. I grew up down in Chapmanville in Logan County. Um, went to Marshall University for undergrad. Went to uh, West Virginia Osteopathic School of Medicine for med school. Uh, then did WVU for internal medicine and training. So I've kind of hit all three major um, uh, institutions here in West Virginia. Uh, for a brief time, went to Tennessee for specialty training in pulmonary critical care, then came back. Uh, opened up a practice in 2007. Uh, it's grown to be the biggest pulmonary practice in West Virginia. Very proud of that. Uh, me and several other uh, partners. And uh, then decided, uh, you know, the state had some health issues and could maybe uh, need some assistance, and I got involved in politics. Yeah, I want to talk about that, too, because a lot of people, and as you know, my dad was a doctor, and I don't know how he would have ever found time to, to run for public office, and, and but you, you have been able to carve out, and I've been in your office, it's a very busy practice, but you've set aside enough time where you can work at the state senate at the same time representing the people of not only Kanawha County, but now the entire state. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, it's tough. I have uh, good good partners that help me out, and um, uh, of course, there's a great staff at the at the Senate that that helps quite a bit, or I couldn't get that done. Um, have to pull back away from the practice a little bit, obviously during during session times. Mm -hmm. But um, other, otherwise, it's working out great. You know, as the you know, this is my will be my fifth year in the Senate, uh, and each year, you know, we get a little more efficient, a little more efficient. So. Uh, Let's talk about the, the reason, the impetus you came, you wanted to serve, particularly on health issues, and we know we have a lot of health issues in the state. Let's talk about opioids first, because uh, there's been major legislation in the past uh, year or so at the state level and at the national level. Are, you, are we doing enough, or what else should we be doing with regard to opioids? That's a great question. You know, we met with um, Dr. Redfield with CDC, and it was amazing to me is that um, nobody has the, the, the ultimate answer, and there, it's because there is none. Um, this is going to have to be fought on many different levels, many different planes. One of the things we did with Senate Bill 273 this past session was cut down the amount of people that maybe gets addicted in the first place. And so uh, West Virginia went from number one down to number seven. We have reduced the amount of opioid prescriptions by 50 percent, uh, and yet we're still the seventh per capita in the country of, of prescribing. So. Um, there's people out there, this, this is a hard-working state, they have real pain, they have real issues, and so there's a fine balance of trying to make sure that we're taking care of patients, we're adequately treating pain, but at the same time, we're not doing things that may create more patients that are addicted to opioids. And so that's what Senate Bill 273 tried to achieve, um, kind of cut the spigot off a little bit so that um, you're not as likely to get patients addicted, but at the same time, making sure that we're adequately treating patients. Um, anything else that we need to do? I mean, should there be more treatment beds? I mean, sometimes it looks like there's never enough out there, given the, the addicts you see just walking down the street. There needs to be more treatment beds. There also needs to be longer uh, mechanisms to treat these patients. I mean, uh, study after study has shown that 30 days is not going to be enough. Uh, you know, oftentimes uh, specialists in the area of addiction will tell you that really you're not out of the woods ever, but especially for about that two-year window. Um, Let's talk about another issue that's out there, and I know you have concerns about this. You, you're kind of weighing the scales on this one, medical marijuana, because mm -hmm. you introduce yourself as a pulmonologist in layman's terms. You're a lung doctor. You have some concerns about people smoking marijuana for medicinal purposes. Yeah, anytime you inhale something into the lungs, that's it's not typically a good thing. You know, I remember back in the 90s, everything was going, blood pressure medicine, diabetes medicine, everything was going to be inhalational, and then it turns out, well, maybe isn't the greatest thing for the lungs. You know, with, with medical marijuana, there's no doubt there are benefits. I have patients that have had lung cancer that have um, stopped their pain medicine, stopped their antiemetics for nausea, uh, and they admit it. They start smoking marijuana and they benefit. They apologize. I said, don't ever apologize if that helps you. But at the same time, like anything, you know, there'll, there'll be some abuse potential. And so um, it's kind of tough. I had one person that said, uh, hey, doc, that's a great thing for your lungs. And I said, now, come on, you know, any, any smoking tobacco marijuana is not going to be good for the lungs. But um, I said, send me what you have and I'll take a look at it. And then it was a medical journal and it talked about how it, uh, all the different damages, the different carcinogens, but 
probably less harmful than chronic tobacco use. And so my response back to that individual was, considering tobacco remains the number one preventable cause of death, and this suggests that it could be number two, I wouldn't send this to anybody else in your efforts to legalize marijuana. Yeah. But um, there's benefits, there's risk. I think the jury's still out. Um, one of the things I tried to do was um, to get the docs out of the involvement. I think if um, people want to use it medicinally, you know, the problem is it's a Schedule One. so if I treat you for diabetes or blood pressure, I've got good information to tell you what dose, what side effects to expect. That doesn't exist for marijuana. Uh, the doses are different, so, so it's not really right to place me in front of that decision. It should really be between... Um, really the patient's decision in my opinion. Right. Well, we'll talk more, more about that and some other issues. We're going to take a break here on Inside West Virginia Politics. We'll be back with Senator Takubo after this break. Stay with us.